So. Okay. All right, perfect. So, so welcome everyone to a special edition of Let's Talk Today. Um, I'm here talking with Dr. Robert Welsh, who uh, happens to be a, a former patient of the VNH. And um, with with this presentation, I wanted to just be able to give it a, a firsthand real experience of what it's like receiving services from the VNH. You know, some things to expect, some things that maybe you didn't think about, you know, related to services. And, um, you know, Dr. Welsh, I'm very happy that you were uh, willing to to be a part of this today and uh that's my pleasure and uh and and we're we're live at, at the lebanon green so uh if you happen to walk by while we were recording this you know you may see yourself on camera so um but so uh i i think uh you know the first question i want to ask you know related to um to your supports is just kind of you know what brought you needing home health supports um you know and i believe it was a couple of times you said that that you've had uh vnh supports come in well, I've had kind of very minimal interaction with the VNA, what well, was VNA then. Yep. But the first time I had broken my leg in New Guinea, I'm an anthropologist and I'm traveling overseas and I broke my leg in New Guinea. So when I came home, um, I had this, this broken tibia, the lower leg, and uh, it was fine and it healed, but 15 years later, 16 years later, it broke again. And I was at the at the Nugget Theater, and right outside the Nugget, my leg collapsed, and I collapsed on the ground, and we rushed to the hospital, and they put a rod up my my lower leg, and so that's not going to break again. But then they sent me home, and I'm a big guy, and I'm, I was six foot three at the time, and substantial size, and. My wife is much shorter than me. She's not able to move me around. So I was really worried about how I was going to handle just getting the house ready to go. And so first time we had the VNA come out and was recommended by our surgeon. And uh, they came out and they helped us clear out the hallway so I get my wheelchair into the bedroom and get in and out of bed comfortably enough. Showed me how to do it. We practiced that a little bit. And she took blood pressure and all that to the vitals and all that. You just want to make sure you're okay. And that was awesome. And then she came back to check up on things and take my vitals again. I think she came just twice. It wasn't very much, but it made she made sure that my wife was able to handle all of my needs. And if she wasn't, we could figure out a way for me to handle it or some workaround, right? Yep. And it's very non-technical what she was doing, but that's it was so much more than my wife was able to handle. And I just think just having somebody there to support you and your family to look after you is really an awesome experience. Just really awesome. And so that was the first time. And I think they came twice. They checked vital signs and all that. But the first time was a really difficult one when they had to help us clear out the hallway so I get my wheelchair into right. the bedroom. It was, you don't think about these things. Right. I'm an academic, I have bookshelves everywhere, so we had to move bookshelves around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say we, but I didn't do anything yeah, because right? I'm in a wheelchair. Um, the, but then I got, she came twice just to check the, everything and it was fine, very easy. Then, that was like 2015, I guess. And then in uh, 2019, I had surgery on my heart. I had my aortal valve replaced. So I've got a pig valve there now. Mm -hmm. And they had to go through my sternum to get into that. And it's kind of a simple procedure in considering modern medicine. It's not very complicated. It didn't take very long for the surgeon. But recovering from it, because they've gone through your chest, it takes a while to recover. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the hospital recovering, I was doing some exercise on campus there. But when I came back, of course, we had the same problem. I had to get be able to get in and around the house and figure out how to do things. And we wanted to have the vital checks and the blood pressure check and everything like that every now and then. And so she helped me a couple times she came in. I think the same gal came in twice. Nice. Um, and that was, that's always nice when you see the same same nurse come in. Yep. 
And these are these guys are very well trained. They know what they're doing, and they make you feel really comfortable in your new setting of home. When you know after a surgery, you're not up and about. Because of the broken leg, I've got um, arthritis in my knee, so I walk with a cane because I don't want to tip over and fall down. But I'm able to get around. I'm going to do most anything. But I just don't do any running anymore because what's the point? I'm, I'm in my 70s. <laughs> and uh, But it was really nice to have somebody to come in and make sure that my wife could take care of my needs as they were and make sure the house was well equipped for me to be mm -hmm. able to get around. Yep. And she didn't and also wasn't scolding, was just warm and sympathetic yep. about everything. Nice. I've every one of the nurses I've met at the VNA, and I met I think three or four over the years, they have just been awesome in their attention to my, you know, our personal needs, right? And our personal needs are not just about us, but we've got spouses or other members of the household, the family, that you've got to get everybody in sync about how to deal with the sick person and right. get them taken care of. And it really hasn't been difficult, but again, she only came twice. But it was nice to know that when she was taking my blood pressure and everything, that uh, you know, I hadn't gotten my own blood pressure cup. And I do that. I take my blood pressure two or three times a day, quite often mm -hmm. nowadays. So I can monitor that, and I keep a, a, on my Excel sheet. I open it up every day and type in the new numbers. Perfect. And so, yeah. it, so I know what it's like. So when my cardiologist wants to know, I can try. But that time, I didn't even know how to use a silly blood pressure cup. I was, right. um, like a newborn. <laughs> and I say that I'm a medical anthropologist. I've studied healthcare issues overseas in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, and uh, but I never was doing the uh, taking blood pressure or anything like that. I wasn't doing any blood measurements. I was just talking to people about their health. Yeah. So I found it really again the second time she just came in twice just to make sure that everything was okay. This time we didn't have to move furniture around very much. It was because I was walk, I was ambulatory. I could walk around, but it was just so nice to know that I had somebody there if I needed some support. Because my wife couldn't help me with something, we could always give them a call, and within a day or two they could come by and help with the project. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, so you know, obviously the the main focus of, of VNH supports is is definitely around the medical side of things. Yeah. Whether it's the um, you know, skilled nursing or some PT, OT, whatever you know, whatever it is that each individual needs. But from from your experience with the VNH supports, it was also um, you know some assistance with ensuring that your environment that you were going to be getting your home care was was set up appropriately, and that those that were going to be providing some uh, support to you, specifically your wife in this case, um, you know, felt comfortable and was able to provide what she could and you know the rest could be set up in a way that either you could do it or or the VNH supports was going to help out. A lot of guys around the upper valley, older guys like me, have wives who are going to freak out if they have to deal with the health care issues of a sick husband. They don't know right. how to deal with it. They're not trained in that. They were professional jobs when they were working at yeah. um, My wife is not one you want to go to for <laughs> high value care <laughs> that's not a criticism of my wife my wife is awesome at what she does but that's not what she does correct and if we work with the VNA or VNH now um, we can get them to come in and help my wife figure out what she needs to do in certain situations when I'm having this kind of concern or that kind of concern my wife has been trained up to be able to help us and one of the problems I have nowadays is I walk with a cane because of the arthritis in the knee from the broken leg. Um, and if I if I slip and fall down in, in the front when I'm trying to move recycling out to the out to the cars to take it to the dump, now I can get around. But if I fell down the other day 
and finding the purchase to stand up again, push against something is sometimes hard because mm -hmm. you're not used to it. And my wife isn't very good at helping on that, so it's probably easier for me most of the time when she's not there to get up on my own. But if I, if this was a repeated problem, I'd want the PNA to come in and help me figure out how do we fix the house. Yep. So that, you know, it would take one visit, maybe two visits. Come in and fix, make sure the house is uh, safe for me to get around and I'm not going to fall down again. Yep. Um, the, the simple solution to my recent problem was got to get some of the recycling out of the front <laughs> wall so we get into the car, get rid of it, you know. Right. But you know, I'd been wet and I had had other, some other events going on that week and couldn't get to the recycling. And, uh, you know, but it just little things like that. That's what you need to look for. Yeah. Is to have somebody come in and just help you figure out what is the solution that you can do for the long term mm -hmm. over the next couple of months while you're recovering. And I have, ever since I first needed the service in, uh, I guess around 15, I have just been a strong, strong supporter. Now, I did know about the VNA since the 90s because one of my uh, undergraduate students at Dartmouth, when I was teaching there, did an honors thesis on the VNA. And I hope you'll interview her at some point. <laughs> I would love to, yes. Yeah, Elizabeth Carpenter Song. She's just awesome. Now has a PhD in medical anthropology. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, but the thing about it is, I wanted her to do something local that she could actually do some field work. And so she went along with the nurses and watched the home health care. Yeah. And again, these are very simple interactions. But they're so meaningful for the patients. And she watched those and observed that. And she wrote that up for her honors thesis. And, um, then she went on to graduate school and got a PhD in medical anthropology. And now she's teaching the college training come back so anyway it's that's how I got first learned about the DNA yeah. but uh, otherwise I wouldn't know and I just heard about it because my surgeon and uh, my surgeon and his team suggested I get in touch with the DNA to go out to the house yep. and get it set up in both cases and I'm quite willing to have all the help I can get. And as I get older, it's nice to have that help. You know it's always there and you need it. And I'm quite certain that if I needed help, without the hospital stepping in, I'm sure if I called over and said, I need this or that, I'm sure we could get some help for a day or two yep. to come in and, and look after our needs, whatever they are. Um, but being armed with that knowledge that the DNA is there, or DNA show, is there for us to help all of us. And as we get older, it's, it's just a resource. But we don't have it anywhere else in the country, really. It's just, it's really unique to this bi state area. Right. Um, and it's so valuable. And my concern is that I want everybody to know that it's, this is a resource that's not something that's going to cost you much. No. And it's, essentially free and it's something that will help you get through the rough spot of these tra medical transitions exactly so and and obviously you know you're a uh you know in, in your explanation you're kind of a i don't want to say a rare case but in a lot of situations the supports that are provided at, at the vnh are longer than you know a yeah. couple of visits and, and things like that obviously you know each each uh, um, treatment plan is tailor made to to that individual. So obviously in your case, it was just a couple of you know a couple of times coming out, making sure things were set, helping with you know uh, you know whatever home health exercises you may need to do to, to help with it, to then get you to a point to do you know outpatient rehab at you know whatever place you would prefer to go to in, in that respect. Um, you know, but for for others, I mean, I've had family members who you know home health services have been going you know a month you know and, and um, I mean you know it's uh, you know everything is going to be tailor made and, and obviously in your situation it was um, you know a little a little less support that was needed and and I mean I um, you know I assume obviously your your wife was a, a huge. Um, resource for you as well to, to help help with it Absolutely. so that so that also helps too but in in a situation where um, 
you may not have that support system in your home. You know, you, if you were, you know, uh, widowed were, or, or something like that. If I were a widower right now, and the same thing happened, I needed one of these services. I had another surgery and came home. Well, there's no way if I can't get up and if I can't get around um, easily, um, there's no way I can survive. So I need I may need to have somebody come in and right. help with this or that or the other thing. Um, because of the arthritis in the knee, I didn't sleep well last night because the, the knee was bothering me. So I got up in the middle of the night and put some lotion on to deal with the pain. Went back to bed. I didn't sleep well, but then I got up later and tried to put something else on. And then went back to bed. And, uh, but if I wasn't able to get up out of bed, you know, then you've got to figure out, have somebody help you think through how do you set up a regimen so you've got the materials at your bedside so yep. you don't have to get up and go in the other room. Exactly. And and for for those that, that do live independently and things like that, a lot of the, the VNH supports also help with trying to set that up so that way you, you know what to do or um, you know to work with you on these are the steps to be able to safely get out of your bed or to get up from your chair so that way you don't you know there isn't that fear of falling there isn't that you know potential even of, of falling um, you know which uh, again the, the VNH supports would also assist with in that respect. Now, the other contact I've had has been indirect but is one of my close friends at from when I was teaching at Dartmouth, he's retired too. His sister is in the area, and she's in the hospice care right now over okay. here near Ellis Peck Day. Okay, yeah. uh, the Woodlands or um, one of those. Uh, Harvest Hill, one of those. Harvest so. Hill, yeah. I okay. Anyway, she's at one of those, and uh, she's got uh, she's had the VNA come in, the VNA come in from time to time to help her in her transition and so forth. Yep. And I think now she's in a facility where they're taking care of it entirely. But there has been a transitional period. And, um, just, first of all, one of the problems we all face is we don't have the resources. Yes. I mean, if I needed hospice care for me or my wife right now, I sort of have a vague idea where I might go. But I don't really know. Right. And, uh... You know, end of life care is something that you want to make people comfortable in their last days. And <clears throat> but this is an area that you guys have expanded on since I gave some service. Yep. I keep calling it the VNA Visiting Nurse Alliance, but it's now being H Visiting Nurse and Hospice. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think it's another important service that you guys do that I haven't taken advantage of, but i got to tell you, if something happened to one of me and my wife and we needed the hospice care, we would sure be drawing from the services. Because I have found everybody that I've dealt with, absolutely everybody, people on the phone, people in person, and you, Anthony, um, I have found every one of you to be just wonderfully helpful about everything. And that's what's really important to yeah. me, is just to have people there that... They're from the neighborhood. They're part of the community. Exactly, you know, and that's all of you live in the area. Right? Yep, yep. Yeah. I, I mean, you know that, and that's, and I think that's the biggest, you know, piece for for the visiting nurse and hospice services is that, um, yeah, we're we're local. You know, we're you know we live in this community. You know, a lot of us have grown up in this community. I mean, I'm I'm born and raised in in uh, you know Springfield, Vermont. Now yeah. live in Windsor, Vermont. But I mean, the Upper Valley is my home, and and. Um, you know, obviously there are a lot of towns that I've, I've visited since I started that I'm, I'm, I apologize to any of those towns, had no idea you existed, but, but again, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter what town I go into, it's still that hometown feeling, that rural environment, um, that is, is just a, a beautiful thing, you know, and the, the beauty in addition to VNH supports is that it comes to you. You know, you didn't, you know, after your surgery, you didn't have to worry about trying to figure out how am I going to get to the doctor? How am I going to get to rehab? Somebody came to you to help. And, and you know, from, from that experience too, um, you know, did you feel that it was a real, it was really like invasive for them to be coming into your house or like uncomfortable for them to come into your house? And, and you know, just, you know, maybe talk a little bit about, you know, what it was like, you know, I, I know you, you, you've mentioned that, 
um, everybody that you've encountered, you've had a great experience with, but just, you know, obviously that first time of somebody coming into your house, you know, kind of, you know, how did that feel and, and how did how did VNH help with kind of easing, you know, Okay, one of our problems at home is we've got too many books and too many papers and I've got piles and boxes and piles of boxes of papers and piles of boxes of photographs and photo albums and piles and piles of books everywhere. Yep. Um, I sold off 3,000 of them a couple of years ago just before the COVID started. And I've still got the house filled with books. Right. And then that, that's not even talking about my wife's books, which are even... <laughs> I mean, we live in a library. Yep. And uh, so we've got, you know, we're not, we don't live in a tiny house. We've got piles of books every which way, and piles of boxes every which way, and piles of papers every which way. Uh, yeah, mostly in cardboard cartons, but they they sort of spill out. So sure. Much. And you know, I haven't entertained for the last few years since I was, I was driving two hours to get to work and teach, and then come back two hour drive. I didn't have time to keep the house tidy like I used to. Sure. Working on one project or another, the piles of papers piled up. And I'd be embarrassed to have my neighbors over to, for for tea with all that. But I, I didn't care about the nurse, the nurses coming, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they just took it as it was. And nobody's saying, tsk, tsk, you don't keep your house tidy enough for me. Right. They don't care. They just want to deal with you and your situation and make sure you can get around and do what you want to do. Perfect. And it was so comfortable. Good. And the first time I had you guys come was after I broke my leg. I wasn't in a position to be arguing, <laughs> but I was a bit worried because I had this all the way full of bookshelves that we had to move so I could get my wheelchair in there. Yep. And uh, boy, they helped. I mean, it was just, there was just no, uh, it just, they pitched in. I mean, lifting a lot of books is a lot of work. Yeah. But so moving three bookcases of books isn't very much work if you're just moving around the corner. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, and they helped. It, it was done in, in a half an hour. Yeah. It was all ready, and I had a path that I could go through. Awesome. And anyway, so I just think I'm one of the strongest supporters of the DNH out here. Now, we're, we're not in a financial position to be supporting you guys with much. We give small amounts every now and then, but sure. um, the one thing I could do to give back is to talk with you today. And yeah. that's when uh, when you contacted me, I thought this would be great. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and I know, you know, obviously we, you know, we were put in contact with, uh, with uh, our, uh, our grants manager, uh, Lisa Orlandini, and, uh, you know, to, to be able to have this conversation and, and you know, and for, for those, you know, uh, for those, you know, potential patients and, and things like that, you know, there, there's definitely at times that kind of worriness about, you know, a stranger coming into to the house. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's your home, it's, it's your personal environment. And, and I know that that well, can be a challenge. We don't have lots of people in the house that we don't know. Yeah. And that it was the first time around. That was one of my wife's worries. But after the nurse came in, took my vitals, made sure we could get my wheelchair into the bedroom and back, and she felt so comfortable because she knew this is a woman who's going to look after our needs. It's not your case in the house. Yeah. And of course, once you get into our house, you realize that there's nothing to case. <laughs> We're <laughs> academics. We have piles of books. They're not marketable. <laughs> you know? um, so, and, and I and I think you know, coming, uh, you know, thinking it at it from uh, you know a, a, an additional caregiver within the home, um, you know, and, and their comfort level and and you know their their understanding and, and things like that. I mean, it, so it sounds like not only did the the VNH put your mind at ease as far as coming in and providing supports, but also put your wife's mind at ease. Oh, she loved having the yeah. come in. Yeah. Both time, uh, both all four times they came. Yeah, you know, and she's one that doesn't want anybody in the house. Period. Yeah, and uh, I've got guys coming in to work on trees and the yard work and the driveway and doing this and that, giving me quotes and things, and they never come into the house, right? right? 
I always go outside and deal with them outside because she didn't want them in the house. She didn't want to interact with them. With them. The one exception she's made of all these years we've been here, we've been in the house 22 years now, all these years, the only ones that she's never had a qualm about was the day and age. That's awesome. You know, you guys, the gals are first of all friendly and, mm -hmm. and very supportive. And she's in a crisis situation because she's got to deal with me. Because it's right. always been me that's been hurt. Right. <laughs> As it traditionally is, the guys that get hurt. <laughs> well, but the other thing is that, you know, she's had cancer a couple times. Yeah. You know, and she's had sur serious surgeries. Mm -hmm. And she had chemotherapy once. Wow. Um, boy, that was a... But I'm... I was quite able to help her with her needs and get her to the to the chemotherapy all the time. So we didn't actually need the village to come and help us those times. What we did was we, we did need was people to tell us what do I need to do to help my wife? What do I have to worry about in terms of symptoms that I need to worry about afterwards? But our docs and the surgeons and everybody were quite good at that. Yes. So we didn't need that. And I'm you know, we were younger then, but uh, that was like uh, 2010, mm -hmm. so you know I knew how to handle that right. stuff. Okay. One time, my wife was still doing chemo. She'd taken this job in Ohio for a while, and so we had to fly her back every every month or so to do her, her chemotherapy, right? And which was a, a challenge. Yeah. She could get herself to the airport in Ohio, and I pick her up here, and we could get her to take care of, and send her back. And so we didn't need them, um, but and if we don't need them, don't use them. Right. But if, when you do need them, and let me tell you, when I was down and out with these couple of health problems I had, I really needed them, and my wife needed them. She was freaking out. Single-handedly figure out what do I need to get into the bedroom when I'm in a wheelchair. Right. Yep. Yeah. And these are not these are not high-power decisions that had to be made. They're sort of basic reasoning that any nurse should be able to do. But my wife wasn't in that mind space. She's just worried that my my husband's almost lost his leg, and that's where she's at. Right. And. Matter of fact about it, he's going to be alright. This is the problem we're going to hear encountering, and this is how to deal with it. That's what makes the difference, and it just completely reassures the wife. That's awesome. And she's a, she's never needed the BNH, but you know, we wouldn't hesitate for a moment if she did. And uh, so I'm just, I just can't be more supportive of the organization. It's kind of unique because it's a bi-state thing. Right. Very few things in the United States are, out, are outside of one state. Yes. You go over to the other. And, of course, I was just telling you earlier that in the two and a half years of COVID, I've only been out of state once. Right. To Connecticut, right? Yeah. And, of course, we go over to Vermont all the time, Lebanon. But, uh, you know, I don't think of that as out of state because that's us. Yeah. That's who we are. Yeah. And that's... It's kind of unusual to have the Upper Valley be as integrated that way as we are. Yep, yeah. I agree. Yours is one of the premier institutions that does that. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we are, you know, from from that that perspective of that, you know, that local hometown, you know, feel agency. Um, I mean, we're we're the only one that that crosses yeah. over the the Connecticut River. I mean, we, you know, we there's, you know, obviously we have our catchment areas in, in both Vermont and New Hampshire. You know, that hug up to. Um, the Connecticut River, but it's yeah, yeah, it's it's something that you know other agencies, you know, in New Hampshire in particular. I mean, they can't cross the border into to Vermont, and um, you know, uh, other agencies within Vermont can't cross into our area because there's you know, rules related to that. But um, but you know, it, but again, it's it like you're saying, it's you know, the people coming in are local to this area they know this area you can have a conversation about things that are happening in this area and it's not a it's not a, a 
there's not going to be a question like what's what's that you know or like I've never heard of you know Hanover New Hampshire you know I've never heard of you know White River Junction Vermont things like that and you know people live in these four towns Norwich White River Hanover Lebanon yeah I mean we all think of these as our yeah it's just one, our, one, one big town one big town right? <laughs> I mean we've got four administrations right, right? Yeah. and they're quite different yeah. right and uh, I was talking to yesterday with to the uh, head of the select board in Hanover. They're got they're got a new city or town manager coming. In, oh yeah. Right? And he seems looks like he's going to be great. But I know we, we work together, and we work together. I was chairing the Heritage Commission for 15 years here in Lebanon, and we're right in the middle of our historic district here right now. And I just stepped down last year, but. Uh, just knowing that you've got people in other towns that can support you when you've got a question about something you're doing. Yep. This is one of the nice, the beautiful things about the Upper Valley. We've got these four towns in a, in a little quadrant. Yep. And, uh, uh, like I said, when I said I've been out of state for the first time in two and a half years, a couple of months ago, I didn't mean going to Vermont because just going over to White River Junction or, Han- or Norwich. Is, all the same. It's all the same. It's yep. part of us, and it's a you. It's you mean, yep. and having the the bi-state um, school systems too mm-hmm. is part of that same thing. Yep. And there's there's us in Riverdale, and then there's um, the V and H is the same thing. Yes. It's all part of the same mentality. We are the Upper Valley. Yep. And that's your center. And it's just an awesome experience. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad. And I'm glad to hear you know from from your experiences you know over the last you know about seven years you know from the the first uh, you know, the first time you experienced us and then again in, in 2019 right before the pandemic and um, you know I'm glad to hear that you know it's been such a positive experience that that you've had um, you know and, and and I think you know in addition this this conversation kind of helps with those that may not understand you know kind of the supports coming in um, may have uh, you know some trepidation around the the idea of somebody coming into their home and, and things like that I mean it, again it's trust it, me if you if your house is when you get sick or have an accident or crisis medical crisis and you haven't cleaned your house that day don't worry because they don't <laughs> care they really don't care yeah no that's and it's, I'm sure my house is a lot messier than anybody else's listening. And when I was having my crisis, but they they, they didn't bat an eyelash at yeah. it. They just accepted it with what it was. Yeah. And the key thing is, they're there to help you live in your environment exactly. as best you can. Yep. And in a way that is as close to what it was before your crisis yep. as, as possible. And you know, one thing we've learned during this two years of COVID is that we need each other. And we haven't had face-to-face contact with most people yep. for two years. And it's good to see that things are starting to open up again, but we're not out in the woods even there yet. Right. You know? Agreed. 100% agree with that. So. And uh, so we're really in a position where the v is going to be something that's going to be... It's going to make the quality of life for everybody in Amber Valley so much better than without it. Yep. And most people don't even know about it. Yep. You know. Well, you know, and again, uh, you know, conversations <coughs> with you, uh, you know, conversations with, you know, with others that um, have had the, the VNH experience, and and you know, want to talk about it. So, you know, again, anybody who's who's watching this that also would love to, to have a conversation, um, you know, just. Uh, Call the VNH, ask for Anthony Knox, and and you know we'll be in touch to to be able to talk about it further. Um, you know, again, it's it, very easy to talk. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Welsh. I appreciate that. Um, so, and just you know, and in, in in closing, you know, from from this conversation, you know, uh, you know, if there's if there's one thing beyond anything else that, that you know you you want to reiterate to to the folks watching um, something maybe you haven't discussed you know just you know closing well, one thoughts thing I want to say when you're in your middle age you don't think you're going to need anything because you're particularly the guys you're invincible 
but yes, the, yes, we are. <laughs> but let me tell you, things happen. <laughs> when you're least expecting it, things happen. And just having these resources in the back of your mind to be able to draw on the, the services of the VNH, that's what's that's probably hard. And then when they, you're in the hospital and you're getting ready to send you home, and you're thinking, how the hell am I going <laughs> to be able to maneuver in my house? Yeah. You know, And you guys are going to think, oh, you're invincible. Um, and the wives are going to think, well, I don't know, I don't want to even deal with any of that. You know? But just, you really need to know how to get some help to get you organized so that you can deal with the crisis, whatever it is. B&H is the place to go, because they're the ones that, these ladies are skilled at that. Uh, you may have some guys that are doing it, but right. mostly men, or mostly women, not right. men, yep. you know, in my experience. And these ladies are just awesome, and I'm sure if you've got guys, they're going to be awesome too, but the ones I've experienced have just been just wonderful resources. Yeah, we didn't have intellectual conversations. I'm a professor. We didn't talk about my work. We talked about their work, and they know a lot more about it than I do. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a trained medical anthropologist, but I don't know the ins and outs of how to take care of I didn't even know how to do blood pressure exactly <laughs> when I was right. first doing this stuff, yep. right? Right. And they had to show me. And, you know, I've got a PhD in medical anthropology. But I never taken blood pressure before. Right. Yeah. I always go and get the doctors and nurses to do that. For me. <laughs> and but when you want to do it all the time at home, you need somebody to show you. Yeah. And sometimes you're not sure about the cuff. Is it working right? Am I doing it right? I've never even had to take it into Dartmouth Hitchcock and get my physicians to and nurses to help me. Wow. Make sure I've got it yep. right. Because I want to do it right, so sure. I've got the so you got the accurate numbers, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And so now I do that all the time for my cardiologist, and I can email that to him every every month, and he says, "That's good, that's good." <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, that's perfect. So anyway, well, thanks for having well, me. Well, no, Anthony. thank really you, thank it. you for uh, for uh, hanging out with me today, and and as the sun starts yeah. coming out here on the on the green, and uh, um, you know, and again, uh, you know, obviously, I I uh, I hope that nothing major medical happens to you in the future, but uh, you obviously know where to come when uh, when and if it does. Well, the thing is, you don't plan for any of this. Right. But it's going to happen yep. from time to time, if not to you, to your spouse, or one of your kids, or your nephews, or somebody hanging around. Exactly. And, or your neighbor, you're going to be a, the resource that's available to you. Exactly. And like I said, we are in a very special place here in the Upper Valley because we've got really well-trained, mostly ladies, but also some guys who do this stuff yep. and will make you feel really comfortable. Absolutely. And you don't have to worry about them ripping you off. <laughs> They're just coming in to help you for a few days until you can get by. And if you need longer, they can do that too. Absolutely. They'll, they'll do whatever you need. With yep. Them. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, it's all tailor made to the individual and, and tailor made to, to what is needed uh, based on uh, based on what's going on medically. So, but uh, um, but again, uh, well, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Walsh, and uh, and uh, 